Yep. You can? Yep. Wait, you can't. Yep. What do you guys want to do? You want to sweat or freeze? Freeze. Oh, it's so it's so warm because the door's open. Would you mind closing that for me? Thank you. Just bring the trash can in. Okay, so next example. All right? Again, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to look at with this is again, see, well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, these are corresponding angles, right? You have a set of, or what we need to do is determine which of these are going to be parallel. So we can see that these are consecutive interior angles, or I'm sorry, corresponding angles. They equal each other, but one's an X and one's a Y. Ah, that's not going to help me out so much, right? One thing I also notice is if this angle is 3y, then what does that angle have to be, Jared? Do you know? You know what this, if that's 3y, do you know what that has to be? It's OK. You can just say no. Josh, do you know? John? 6y. Nope. 3y. Yeah, do you know? Oh. Colin? 1.5y. No. Richard, do you know? 90. Huh? 90. 90. 90. Guys, when you have a line intersected by another line, what type of angles do you create? Does anybody remember them? They rhyme with vertical. Vertical angles, right? Vertical angles happen when you have an angle or a line intersected by another line. Then the angles share a vertex but do not share a side. Right here, do we have a line intersecting another line? Yes. The one thing to know about vertical angles is that they are equal in measure, right? All vertical angles are equal in measure. So therefore, if this is 3y, Guillermo, what does this have to be? 3y, because they're vertical angles. Now we have these two interior angles. If you look at these two lines, these two angles are interior. Correct. Correct. So if they're interior and they're right next to each other, they're on the same side of the transversal, then we call them Ariel. What do we call them? Lauren, you remember? You remember what we call them? Same interior, same side? Uh, they're called consecutive. Interior angles. And Colin, what are consecutive interior angles? Would they add up to 180 or add up to each other? They add up to the 180. Each other. Very good. Consecutive interior angles add up to 180. So therefore, I can say 5y minus 4 plus 3y equals 180. I'm going to show you a diagram next, and then they'll hopefully clear it up for you. So therefore, these are consecutive interior. How do I? Well. So why do I get that equation? So you've got to make sure you write that in there. Do not write an equation and not tell me where that equation came from. All right? Make sure you guys, if you're writing an equation, because two angles are consecutive interior, or they're vertical angles, or whatever, you need to tell me that's what they are. So therefore, now to solve this, I have 8y minus 4 equals 180. Add the 4, add the 4. 8y equals 184. So now I need to divide by 8. Was that right? What, what messed up? Was that problem written correctly? Wait, where'd you get 8 from? 8y. 5y plus 3y. 5y minus 4, 3y. OK. Is there anything else I'm doing? I mean, I guess that would work. Um, all right, so what's 184 divided by 8? 23. 23. So therefore, y equals 23. So now we know what y is, right? So ladies and gentlemen, we can now plug in what y is right here. So we could say that's 3 times 23. And 3 times 23 is going to become 69. So now you have the answer of 69. All right. Now, Daryl, do you remember how I originally talked about these two angles? How are they related to each other? 
They're what type of angles? It starts with the C. They're corresponding angles. Since these are corresponding, Colin, do they equal each other or add up to 180? They add up to 180. No, they equal each other. Watch your language, please. So 69 equals 2x minus 3. We can move that over to you as well. Because you're supposed to be writing this. Did you write this down? So I'm showing you. OK. So now I subtract 13. Therefore, I have 56 equals 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2, 28 equals x. OK? That's your answer.